This video is about the extreme value theorem, which states that if we have a function f that is continuous on a closed and bounded interval a, b, then the function attains a maximum value and a minimum value at some point c and d in the interval a, b. So this means attaining a maximum and minimum value means that for every x between a and b, the values of the function f of x will be between a minimum value taken on by the function at d and a maximum value taken on by the function at uh, c. So to illustrate this, here I have a closed interval a, b, and the point is that no matter how I try to draw the graph of a continuous function connecting these two points, these two red points, I will be guaranteed by the extreme value theorem that there will be at least one point between a and b, namely right here along the x-axis at c, where the function takes on a maximum value, and there will be at least one point between a and b along the x-axis, namely here at d, where the function takes on a minimum value. Okay, so this is the extreme value theorem, which, which we sometimes shorten to EVT. Two remarks about the theorem. First, notice that the fun uh, theorem doesn't actually tell you how to find these numbers c and d. It only tells you that they exist. So this is an example of an existence theorem, as we call them. Second, both conditions in the theorem are necessary. So these conditions of the function f being continuous and the interval a, b being closed, they are both crucial. If we let go of either of these uh, conditions, then the theorem no longer holds true. And to illustrate how this is the case, I give you two graphs. Here you see the graph of uh, the function f, which is defined on a closed interval between negative 3 and negative 1. And it actually takes on a minimum value of zero at the endpoints, but notice how it never takes on a maximum value in that interval at any point, because as x approaches negative two from the left, you see it getting closer and closer to the, to the uh, least upper bound two, but it doesn't take on that value at x equals negative two. It jumps down to take on the value one at x equals negative two. So because of this discontinuity, uh, no maximum value is taken on by this function in the closed interval. So this is why continuity is so crucial. On the other hand, you see the graph of this continuous function g um, that is continuous on the interval on which it is defined, but the interval itself is open. It's the open interval between 0 and 2, and that lets us have this function that doesn't take on a minimum value nor a maximum value. Uh, so with these examples, um, uh, treated, we are ready for some questions. Is it true or false that the function f of x equals x squared has a maximum value on the open interval between negative 1 and 1? Pause the video and select your answer now. Okay, it's false because the interval is open. It means that the function cannot take on the least upper bound of 1 that it would have at x equals plus or minus 1. Next question. The signal function takes on a maximum and minimum value on any closed interval between negative a and a, with a being a positive number, yet it is discontinuous at zero. So does this contradict the extreme value theorem? Pause the video and select your answer now. Hope you pause it and I realize that, that no, it doesn't contradict the extreme value theorem. The theorem says that it, once you have a continuous function on a closed interval, then it will take on a maximum and minimum values at some point. It doesn't tell you that some sort of converse would be also true. So just because the function takes on minimum and maximum values on a closed interval, it doesn't guarantee you that the function is continuous. And here is the perfect example to show you a discontinuous function that has those properties. Next, the sum of two non-negative numbers is six. Find the largest possible value of their product. So pause the video and input your answer in the box. Hope you paused it and have inputted nine. So here I have two non-negative numbers. One of them I call x, and the other one, because the sum needs to be six, the other one needs, is forced to be six minus x. Um, now, here I have the product of the two numbers, and uh, notice that x is defined in the closed interval between zero and six. With that, I guarantee that x is non-negative and 6 minus x is also non-negative. So I have this function x times 6 minus x that is continuous on a closed interval. So by the extreme value theorem, we are guaranteed to, um, that there exists a point between 0 and 6 at which it attains its maximum value. So let's find that value then. 
and we expand the, the parentheses to get 6x minus x squared, then complete the squares to get 9 minus x minus 3 squared. And with that, we notice that um, we subtract from 9 a non-negative uh, quantity, a square. So to make that the largest possible value, we need to subtract 0. And that happens that x equals 3. So this is the largest at x equals 3. We get f of 3 is 9. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.